Black and Tans of the Irish Republican Army. It is 1921, a year of total war, a year of decision. Right. That means O'Leary's around here somewhere. The girls said they were both in oh, on it. it was a girl, was it? Pretty, I'll wager, and eyes blue and innocent. We'll find her and stop her blabbing for good. Not you, my lad. You've only got till dawn. Put him in the lorry. Please, sir. Please. What's your name? Kerry O'Shea. Can you identify yourself? Your parents? Yes. This says you're American. My mother died last year. I brought her back to Ireland to rest beside my father. You've been here ever since. Rather a long visit, isn't it? I'm a medical student at the College of Surgeons. Ah, on Cork Street. St. Stephen's Green. Name of the Chancellor? Maitland. Sir Robert Maitland. Go on, get after him! Who are you? She's a friend of the family. We found these under the wall, sir. That'll be no leery. Thank you. It is a small thing to do for Kathleen O'Shea, whose son once showed Eileen O'Leary a very great kindness. be the firing squad if they catch him. Like it was for Joe Cullen this morning. Hey, Carrie! Where were you off to so early this morning? Shh. Never mind about that. Well, a fine roommate you turned out to be. Why? Not a friend of mine who isn't talking about the, the American lad who struck a blow for the cause yesterday among the brave dead in Glasnevin Cemetery. And who is the last to hear of it? Myself. For a very good reason. I wasn't striking any blow for any cause. <laughs> well, what was it then? To make monkeys out of the blackened times? Eileen O'Leary on her knees beside you while her man gets over the wall. It was just instinct. I didn't have a chance to think. Ah, because you knew it was right. Look, let's forget the recruiting speech, huh? You followed the fine instincts of a true Irish American. Irish born of Irish parents. Patty. I'm not going to join the organization. I told you that. I got all the fighting out of my system in France. What you're saying is that you don't believe in the cause. Let's just say I don't believe violence ever solved anything. <laughs> but my heart's with you. What'll it take, man, to make you realize that your heart isn't enough? Ah, it must be a grand thing to be an American, with your war for independence already won.
<laughs> Here comes Lenahan. Before resuming the subject of microstenosis, would Mr. Leonardo da Vinci O'Connor please remove his latest work of art from the blackboard? <laughs> and I'd like to remind Mr. O'Connor and other members of the class who apply more zeal to their politics than they do to the medical studies that there's a splendid course in political science being offered at university college and all are free to transfer there. Now, as to mitral stenosis, this gentleman, as we learned yesterday, is an almost stone-like hardening of the leaflets of the mitral valve. These leaflets, these valve leaflets, ordinarily are soft and pliable, permitting a free flow of blood through the area. When the hardening occurs, the flow of blood is stemmed. The surgeon's problem is how to widen the aperture. Unfortunately, no one has yet devised a satisfactory technique. However, medicine is looking, hopefully, to the researches of a young man of this college, a student of natural history, who will undoubtedly find the answer in avid pursuit of what he does best. Bird watching. <laughs> If you were my surgeon, Mr. O'Shea, and I were on the operating table with my life in your hands, I would not rest easy. Anesthetic and all, if a pigeon on a windowsill had more of your attention than my exposed inside. <laughs> and now, gentlemen, if we have finally decided why we are in this classroom, the subject, as you may recall, is microstenosis. A man's nothing. He's nothing unless he believes in something. I do believe in something. What? Patty, tonight I believe in a red-headed girl, five foot four inches tall, in her bare feet. And I mustn't keep the poor <laughs> darling waiting. You're hopeless. Hopeless. <laughs> Will you have a drink, Your Honor? We report O'Leary was in here. O'Leary? O'Leary? The name has a lot of use in Dublin. Would it be Sean O'Leary you mean, and O'Liam, perhaps? Maybe the gentleman is searching after Seamus O'Leary, who had his stable burned down on him and was left without a roof for his poor old horse. That's enough of that. Perhaps you'll do me the honor of having the pint of port that his lordship refused. Where's not? Want not. Here's look. Good look. Wouldn't that make your blood boil? Oh, now, Paddy. Oh, when a man can't enjoy a harmless pint without being spied on. Hey, you better save your voice. You got a report to read tomorrow. And, uh, don't wait up for me. You know, for a man of peace, you devote a great deal of time to the battle of the sexes. It's merely the study of the human figure. Very important for a doctor. Mr. O'Shea, has it occurred to you that when you're a doctor, you may have a male patient or two? No. But if I do, I'll just turn them over to my good friend, Dr. Patrick Nolan. I wonder... I wonder what Terence O'Shea would think to hear his own son talk like this, and him among the leaders when they captured the Hall of Records. And what did he get for it? A bullet in his spine. No, Patty, let's just say that one O'Shea is enough of the course. Hey! You want us to widen the streets for you? Come on! Come on! 
Get out of it, man. I'm done. Come on, boy. Paddy Nolan, he's hurt. He told me to bring him here. Is one of the boys. It is the nice looking ones always get hit first. to another. It's going to take a surgeon. Get Benan. Benan? I know where he lives. I'll go. On my oath, I swear to fight for the Republic. Careful, careful, Tracy. That town nearly shy. No, no. Let me take this one. What's keeping them? It's a long way. How's that for shit? What's all this? What's all this? Where's Mary? She's gone for help. I want her to stand aside from the troubles. And you too, you old hag. Shh. Stay out of this. Clancy, the poor lad was hurt. Don't, Clancy. I'll teach you to listen when I tell you something. Would he rather death for the cause? Would you have me turn the lad out? I suppose the black and tan's coming. What then? I always done what you wanted. You know how I feel about you. You see, you remember. Hurry now. Regular fancy Dan waiting for you at the hotel. Lonely he is. And smiling for a touch of feminine companionship.
sorry about the redhead. But a poor student, Paddy Nolan, but a good soldier. It doesn't matter what your epitaph is when you're dead at 23. Yes, it does. It does matter. I'll send a priest and some men by before morning. The Tans will be coming to your place to ask questions. Probably there now. Why? I dropped my textbook. It has my name in it. Well, you better come with me. We'll keep you at headquarters for a while. All right, stop all the fussing. You look grand enough. Keeping no appointment tonight or any other night. <laughs> Everything ready? Just waiting for the word, Commandant. Now remember, the second the car turns onto the Curra Road, you make your move, not until then. Hmm? We've got to get those plans. We've got to find out what they're up to at Dublin Castle. We'll get them for you, nice and easy. Hmm. Dermot. Sir? You, uh, you'll go in Paddy Nolan's place. He was killed tonight. Are you ready, Jim? I am, Dad. Well, get down with it, then. We've lost enough time. Carby. Yes, Commandant? You, uh, you take Foley with you. You go to Agus Madigan's place. Paddy's lying there. What do we do with him, sir? Phoenix Park. Arrange for some boys to find him. Is that how you bury your heroes? It's no more than he'd expect. Or any of us dead for the cause. We're fighting a war. When you were fighting your war in France, and a friend fell beside you, did you stop to shed great tears over him? Was that why they gave you your medals? Oh. If we could, we'd bury him at Glasnevin with Parnell and O'Connell and the rest. With the flag of the Republic draped over his coffin and flowers. His favorite hymn being sung. But we're underground. We have to take death as it comes, ugly and friendless. It's the living we have to think about now. There are two courses open to you, O'Shea. One is to join us, join the organization, help us in our fight. And the other? To get you out of Ireland, back to America. I 
I've done all the killing I intend to do. O'Leary, our young friend could do with a drink. He was in it with Patty tonight. Was it bad tonight, lad? All the years gone by, all the dead. And how far have we come? Ah, well, Tarn La Tacht. The day's coming. O'Shea, the general would like to see you. Well, you're Kerry O'Shea, are you? You're right, Sean. He does look like him at that. Taller than Terence was, though, wouldn't you say? But with the same stubborn look around the eyes. Oh, a stubborn man your father was. We used to fight like corner boys when we were children. Oh, many's the time we fought side by side when we were grown up and had something real to fight for. I've in mind the last time, the, the day of the raid, when your father got the bullet that was intended for me. He'd have bled to death right there on the cold marble floor if the commandant here hadn't carried him out, slung him over his shoulder like a fireman, with the bullets whistling around them. I found him wandering along the canal, General, in a daze like. He was gabbling to himself, but I couldn't make out what he was talking about. Well, McGrath. I don't know what was asked, sir. I killed her. I knocked him. She opened the door herself. Lovely she was. All dolled up and her eyes shining. Hello, Timmy, says she. Just like that. Then I, I felt the gun going off in my hand. And I had to shout Joe Collins' name so she'd know why I was doing it. She looked so lovely. And she fell. A good man is dead because of her. Where were you going when Monaghan found you? Anywhere. Away. To get rid of the sight of her. I done what was asked. That's enough. You want to resign. Is that it? Are your parents alive, McGrath? Very well. We accept your resignation. As long as we know where to send your body. You swore the oath. You know the rules of the organization. Once in, never out. You can always withdraw your resignation. Would you care to do that now? Yes, sir. These things are not pleasant, but they have to be done. You see, we are hopelessly outnumbered. done us a service, O'Shea. We owe you something in return. You'll stay here until the Commandant can arrange to get you safely out of Ireland. If that's what you're wanting. It's only yourself if it's you, Castle. Good morning. 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 Good morning.
morning, Cassidy. Good morning, Lady Fitzhugh. Is it a Dublin you're headed this fine day? I have not missed the Rose Show at Dublin Castle for 30 years, Cassidy. I should think you would know that by now. Oh, the Rose Show, is it? Then you'll be seeing a more fragrant aspect of the city than a farmer gone there to buy a cab. <laughs> a pleasant journey to your ladyship. And it's a prize I hope you'll be bringing back. The grand prize, if I am any judge, Cassidy. Or if the judge is any judge. Good time. Chris Noonan, Terry O'Shea. Oh, yes. Yes, headquarters told us to expect another calf. He looks a good one. He's for the boat. I'll load the truck. Hi, right, Tom. Right, Willie. Willie. I don't think the Commandant will like what he finds in there. Nuno will look after you till the boat comes. Well, I, I don't know when that will be exactly, O'Shea. The boat's ahead in this affair. <laughs> of course, it's hard to keep to a regular timetable in our line of work. up a minute if you don't mind. Help the others with the truck. Is it a squad you're commanding here, Chris Noonan? Or a club for the gang of corner boys? Yeah, sure. sure. There's no harm in Kizzy, Sean. May I remind you, you're all on the run. Every man here ate a fighting squad the minute he's caught. Well, I usually find Sean is that sort of man who's most in need of a woman's company. Her kind? And what kind would you suggest for the poor boys, Commandant? Is it those ladies from the organization that pour tea and make speeches you'd be wishing on them? They've taken the oath. They can be trusted. Trust them you can. I trust my own darling brother with any of those skinny frumps down a dark lane and no moon. I've taken no oath. But it's better than tea and three cheers. Kitty Brady will be given for any brave boy who has. And what is the Commandant to say about that? I'm warning you, keep away from here. Is it another one, then? With hardly a trace of fuzz on his cheek and marked for an early grave. If you're lonely and hard, fella, the boys will tell you the way to Donovan's pub. Oh, I'm afraid I don't qualify for your kind offer. Oh? And why not? I haven't taken the oath. Well, perhaps for you, I could find some personal reason. Cassidy's taking me back to Dublin. Oh, I'm operating this afternoon. Sorry you'll have to miss it. When you get back to America, keep on with your studies. You'll make a doctor one day. A good one. Shalom, Lath uh, About my father, uh, this may be a little late, but thanks. Slow that day on. You know, I, I've worked for a year under that man and I still can't figure him out. Yes, he's a deep one, all right, our commandant. Well, I mean, saving life on the one hand, having to kill on the other. It must be hard for the man himself to know what he is, sometimes. Oh, lads. Oh. Well, the, uh, the lean and hungry look is Willie Lafferty. Michael Callahan's our young Marconi. I think you've met O'Brien, Terence O'Brien, leaving uh, Tommy Connor on guard duty. I generally give him the day shift because, uh, well, his mother thinks he ought to be tucked up in bed by dark. Now, let's see where we can settle you, O'Shea. I think you could bed down over here in this corner, couldn't you? You'll be resting on a brave man's pillow, so you will. Aye, Johnny McCartan won't be needing it now. Well, I hope you're big enough to... Pick Johnny's boots. I'm afraid I won't get a chance to try. Uh, he doesn't belong to the organization. 
He's only here for the boat, Thomas. Why is that now? He looks like a fighting man. Or is that just on the outside? That's enough, O'Brien. No, no, it's all right. Let him talk. Well, I was just thinking... I was just thinking... Need men the way we do. This, this fellow looks strong enough to carry a rifle. Or is he afraid to leave an empty bed behind the way Johnny did? Oh, leave him alone, man. Oh, most of his reasons. His what? His reasons. Oh, reasons. Oh, he has his reasons, all right. And I believe we'd see those reasons if he took his shirt off and showed us where his spine used to be. I think you've said enough now. <laughs> Listen to him now. Just now he was looking like a fighting man, and now he's talking like one. <laughs> ah, but I'm thinking. <laughs> well, it comes right down to it. It, it wouldn't take much more than a, well, than a breath of wind to blow him over. Just a little breath of wind, huh? To blow you over, huh? When that boat comes, I'll be on it. Eileen, oh, there's good fish in the sea. But there's none of them like the fried of Petra Bowl. Do you mind, company? No. I wouldn't let O'Brien get you down. Do you think I'm running out? No, not at all. Why should I? After all, it's not your fight, is it? Besides, as far as you're concerned, by tomorrow night, it'll all be ancient history. Old oil will come puffing over from the lighthouse, and that'll mean you're both just rounding into the cove. It's a beautiful spot. Just across the hills there. I go there myself sometimes, whenever I can, do a bit of work. Just to keep my hand in, in case the killing should ever end. What is your work? Slim volumes of sensitive verse. <laughs> You're a poet? Oh, worse than that. They're in Gaelic. Highly satisfying, but of course, completely unprofitable. Hmm. You look startled. Well, you... You don't exactly expect to find a poet with a rifle. No. Well, patriotism taps at all sorts of doors, O'Shea. It must have been a bit of a shock for the enemy, too. I mean, who could imagine the odd, grubby fellow in the attic over Moser Street? Looking for internal rhyme. In Gaelic, too, mind you. Could be the same dirty rebel who led the ambush at Bray. And a few more before that. Unfortunately, my twin personality was brought to their attention. And here I am. On the run. Oh, it's not a bad sort of life, really. I've even come to be something of a farmer. Chris! Chris Noonan! You're wanted inside. O'Sullivan's after breaking out of Dublin Castle. But Liam O'Sullivan? Yeah. Are you sure? It's coming through now. Here, you take over, Willie. Liam O'Sullivan, is it? Man, dear, the English will be hot on his heels and no mistake. Well, not too hot, I hope. No. Well, because he's heading this way. Is he all right, do you know, Tommy? Is he in good health? Didn't say. He was spotted when he let himself down the wall. They lost him in the crowd visiting for the Rose Show. Mm, it is a famous shipmate you'll be having, one of the leaders. Well, as it's done, Lady Fitzhugh is bringing back the grand prize. Lady Fitzhugh? All sorts of doors, O'Shea. Now, boys, tomorrow, when the village bell strikes 12 noon, Lady Fitzhugh will drive up to Donovan's pub and ask directions for the road to the beach. Now, it just happens we're headed for a dip ourselves, and we go along with her to show her the way. We detour into the woods of Kilmacool, and Liam O'Sullivan steps out of the boot of a Rolls Royce into the more plebeian vehicle of one Tom Cassidy. And Lady Fitzhugh purrs her happy way to the Irish Sea. Bless her darling old soul. Quality she is, real quality. Uh, no weapons. No, we're all just uh, standing at the bar, drinking like villagers. No weapons? 
Now, what kind of an order is that? Just in case anything slips up. We don't reveal there's a squad in the neighborhood. You are again, Chris. I'm the commandant to you. He wants an answer. Sullivan's hurt. Chest wound. Lennon's patching him up. It'll be a rough journey. You need attention straight away. O'Shea, if you say no, there's not a man here who'll hold it against you. I promise you that. Tell him I'll go. Anyway, you're different from the rest. How? Oh, a whole day gone by and me looking for you to show up. Why oh, didn't you notice me? I noticed you, Kitty. <laughs> Did you know that's better? They say you were studying for a doctor. You're the kind of hands to bring comfort to a body and make them forget their pain. Well, some of my teachers didn't have quite your perception. Perhaps you'd like to try out your learning sometime. If a poor girl needed your help, a girl with a deep pain in her chest, say, and in real need of care. Clever old girl, she give them a run for the money, all right. Must you occupy the entire street, Captain? I'm sorry, lady, if it's you, I must search your car. Orders. Whose orders, may I ask? Dublin Castle, ma'am. Every southbound car. Sergeant? Dublin Castle, indeed. General French will hear from me about this. I'm sorry, Lady Fitzhugh. Do you want to look in the glove compartment for concealed weapons? I don't think that'll be necessary. Hurry it up, Sergeant. This is locked, sir. Have you the key to the boot, Lady Fitzhugh? No, I'm afraid I have not. Where is it, then? I have not the slightest idea. Would you like to accompany me home? It may be there. And if it is not at home, we can telephone the Rolls-Royce people in Dublin and have them sent one out. I'm sure General French would give one of his dispatch riders to them, if he knew it was for me. I think we can forget it, Lady Fitzhugh. Up in a bad business, ma'am. Johnson! Sir! Move over. Dublin Castle. Sergeant!
Stand up. Sergeant. Still working for Cassidy? Oh, I, I am indeed, sir. Learn something from him. Stay out of politics. Oh, indeed, sir. On your feet. Captain, don't you want to search me, Captain? You're not hiding a thing, miss. Hold it there! British Army issue. Where'd you get it? Do you know, lady, if it's you? Or the late occupant of our luggage compartment? Huh? Take him to the barracks. Get a move on. Well, why not? Why not? Better him than me. It wasn't even one of us. Get us another drink, will you? How many men in your squad? Where are they hiding? What's the name of your leader? Sullivan! Revive him. You talk. Is it running all right? Two months in a wood hasn't harmed her a bit. Purring like a kitten she is. Oh, why? Cassidy. Uh, O'Brien. See to it that this place is stripped clean. Not one sign left that we've ever been here. Everything goes to the lighthouse. After what happened today, the tans will be turning our file upside down. Yes, sir. I only hope we can get O'Shea out before they break him. No, he'll not break, son. Chris, we are not dealing with British regulars. We're dealing with tans. I need I remind you, O'Shea knows more than any man in your squad. He's been to the hideout in Dublin. He's talked to the general. Well, I still say he can take anything they have to offer him. Do you believe that much in him, do you? Well, do you not, John? Can't afford to. All right. Let's get started. Evening, Corporal. Evening, sir. Captain Hilly, Headquarters Battalion. 
Here to take the prisoner to Dublin Castle. That's all right, sir. We had word you was coming. Come for the prisoner. Right, sir. I swear it wasn't. His name? Smithson. Colonel Smithson. Colonel Smithson. That's for standing by and watching it happen. Chris. From Dublin Castle to pick up the prisoner. Your men just got here, sir. What? In the lorry, sir. You bloody idiot! Open that gate! Right, sir. did it, and we'll pay him back for you 10,000 times over. You are right, Chris. We should have known. I'll be going back to Dublin as soon as I get O'Shea patched up. All right, Commandant. Commandant! What is it? Boats coming in. Right, Doyle. Bring my kit. Whiskey, Chris. Thank you. Here, here you are. Commandant. 
Commandant, it's Doyle. See what he wants. It's getting to be a habit of yours, helping me your shade. For the last time. The boat's waiting. I'm not going. You need men, don't you? You know what that means. The oath. Once in, never out. You'll see blood flow. I can taste my own right now. It's the boat, Sean. Tide only gives them a few minutes. The captain's worried. Tell them. No passengers. Not too much for you, huh? Oh, no, no, I'm fine. Not a very busy thoroughfare, this. Of course. <laughs> That's a sensible charm for us. Oh, once a year or so, somebody strolls this way. A pair of lovers, perhaps. A poet in search of a rhyme. The rest of the time, it belongs to the girls. Chris, when am I going to be needed? Ah, oh, no, listen, you've only been a week. You must have started trying to run before your legs can carry you. Well, the thoroughfare's getting a little busier. Tommy Connor told me you were here. Uh, who told you about the lighthouse? Cassidy sent me. Why didn't he come himself? He's being watched, like every man in Ardfala. The Tans are raking the whole county looking for the men Lady Fitzhugh was to meet. They're often a reward for your names. Yes, well, rewards were offered before, and nobody talked. They might this time, Cassidy says. Well, why this time? The Tans are saying that unless you're all turned in, They'll take a hostage from every village. That sounds like Colonel Smithson, all right. I better get word to Lenahan at once. Will you look at what the murdering scum have done to you now? From the moment they took you, I never stopped thinking about you, praying that you wouldn't know too much pain. I thought about you too, Kitty. About me? Mm hmm When I thought I couldn't stand it anymore, I knew I had to get my mind on something else or tell them what they wanted to know. So I try to think of something beautiful. And I thought about you. Well, you you don't have to say that if it isn't true. But it is true. It it could have been anyone. It's just that I was the last woman you happened to see. Well, whatever it was, Kitty, I'm very grateful. <laughs> What has no taste for imposing a prison sentence on a woman of the defendant's age and position? A woman, too, who bears a title which has been a symbol of all that is fine in Irish life since the days of the Norman Conqueror. But the defendant's refusal to cooperate leaves me no alternative. Far from expressing regret for her action, she has boasted both of her membership of a seditious group and of her attempt to spirit the man Liam O'Sullivan, an avowed rebel, out of Ireland. Yes, that is quite accurate. It has been brought to my notice that your ladyship has refused food from the day of your arrest in an effort to focus attention on what you insist on calling Ireland's fight for freedom. May I suggest that a hunger strike in a person of your years is a needlessly rash undertaking? The crown, I assure you, will not be intimidated by the gesture. I will have my next meal in my home, Fitzhugh Castle. Before I pass sentence, has the prisoner anything to say? Yes, indeed I have. What is an English judge doing in an Irish court? <laughs> the sentence is two years imprisonment in Mountjoy Jail. It was something to see, that wonderful old lady with a spine like a ramrod, willing to die for her beliefs. But the general isn't going to let her die. Lady Fitzhugh's next meal is going to be in her home, Fitzhugh Castle, where she belongs. You mean we're going to take her out of Mountjoy? Oh, 
O'Brien. If you weren't such a superb man in a fight, I'd have you committed. We could as easily raid the Bank of England itself. Well, how then, Sean? An idea given to us by our good friend, Colonel Smithson, a hostage, to be returned when Lady Fitzhugh was released. That's a grand idea. Now, would you consider, would you consider the daughter of Sir Arnold Fielding a fair exchange? The advisor to the military governor? <laughs> That's big game. Or that sit up and back like they're bulldogs if we got our hands on an English rose like that. Oh, well, I wish I could come with you, madame. But I'm afraid the Prime Minister wouldn't understand what you Philip. And he is waiting for my report. Well, I'll put a pound on Brian's daughter for you. That'll have you there in spirit at any rate. <laughs> Good luck. Goodbye, Father. Makes me happy to see you getting out again, Jennifer. Enjoying yourself. Sorry to put you to all this trouble, Captain Fleming. Trouble, ma'am? I'm sure the Army has more important duties for its officers. I can't think of any, ma'am. Great you are, sir. Sorry, sir. The donkey has the right away. Don't do anything foolish, Captain. Over. I'll do anything you say. Just let Mrs. Curtis go. I'm sorry, Captain. It happens to be Mrs. Curtis we want. Roadblock ahead. I hope we understand each other, Captain. <laughs> All right, you, Captain. How long can be long, sir? Thank you, Sergeant. Anything wrong with Ernie? Had the night off. I is a kite. <laughs> so was I. We'll be missing the first race at this rate, Captain. Would you mind, Sergeant? We're in rather a hurry. I quite understand, sir. All right, let Captain Fleming through. Ernie's been up to his tricks again. The captain's got a drive from the 28th. 28th? That's funny. What's so funny about it? Well, the old lot pulled out last month. India. Must have left one bloke behind. Blimey. Hey there! Stop that car! Aim low! Aim for the tire! <laughs> Stem the bleeding. You can make your way back to Dublin from here. And tell Sir Arnold the day Lady Fitzhugh has returned to her home for good, he'll see his daughter again. Have you men no feelings? Can't you see Mrs. Curtis needs medical attention? No, there's no need to worry me, lad. She'd have the best surgeon in the college tending to her. Give your tongue a rest. Why don't you give him my address, too? You just cost the captain his life. <laughs> Cassidy, get the truck.
Must have been a ricochet. Half an inch higher, I might have pierced the jugular vein. Hit the clavicle? No. I appear to have been lucky. This is going to be painful. The only thing we have to offer in the way of an anesthetic is some whiskey. I don't believe Lady Fitzhugh is bargaining for her comfort. As you wish. I think you'd better hold on, Mrs. Curtis. There. That should do it. Clean dressing every day. And watch out for any signs of infection. I suppose this makes you both feel like doctors again. Instead of murderers. She'll be fine. By the holy, they're burning up the airwaves tonight. Turning the city upside down, they are, for our guest. It's a bad day for herself all round. Her horse got beaten by a lead. What's troubling you, Caddy? The captain? Shooting your enemy on a battlefield is one thing, but an unarmed man in a peaceful hillside. It was his life or mine. Yeah, we were going to execute him. What would you have me do? Send him back to Dublin knowing what he knew? How long do you think it would have been before they were pounding on the doors of the College of Surgeons? In time, you'll come to believe as we do. We're not fighting faces. We're fighting uniforms, row after row. Standing between Ireland and freedom, remember that. And forget pity and mercy. Those are peacetime words, used to soften and weaken us. I don't think any war is worth winning if you forget mercy and pity. It's curious. Seeing you staring out over the quiet water, the turmoil within you, it could be 30 years ago, and young Terence O'Shea standing there instead. You're that much like him. Oh, I don't mean the way you look, the words you speak, but what's inside you? Killing didn't come easy to him either, even for the cause. But when the time came, and it had to be done, he's gone fired faster than mine. Gary, you're every bit the man your father was. We need you. Step into his place. Stand by my side till we've won. Well, gentlemen, it all comes down to these two scraps of paper. A letter from the rebels demanding a prisoner exchange from the doctors at Mountjoy Jail, a report that Lady Fitzhugh continues to refuse nourishment and will probably live no more than a fortnight. Why not send the old girl home, sir? Surely if we keep an eye on her, she can't do us any more harm. Except that it makes us look like idiots. If you want my opinion... I may, General. Yes, of course. I want it clearly understood that I am only here as a representative of the Crown, not as a father. Thank you, Sir Arnold. It seems to me that if we knuckle under now, it's a dreadful loss of face for England. I'm not sure that that would be quite as bad as the drubbing that our prestige is taking. Prestige? Pa! Do you wish to elaborate on that exclamation, Colonel Smithson? What do you think happens to our prestige? We let ourselves be beaten by a senile old woman and a pack of cutthroats. My men were sent to Ireland to do a job. We took over what was left of the Royal Irish Constabulary and made it into a force to be reckoned with, the Black and Tans. I grant you we're not all graduates of Sandhurst and members of fashionable regiments as you gentlemen are. 
I have a job of work to do, and I'm going to do it my way. Most eloquent, Colonel Smithson, but the point of the discussion seems to have escaped you. What we're looking for is a way to return Mrs. Curtis to her father. I'll find your daughter, Sir Arnold, if I have to burn every house in Ireland to the ground. It's the only language these people understand. Beg pardon, sir. Yes, what is it? Telephone for Colonel Smithson. Oh, not now. I'll take it later. But it's important, sir. They found Captain Fleming. Fair chance he might live. He's lost a great deal of blood. I must talk to him. He's very weak, Colonel. He's also a soldier. Captain Fleming. Captain Fleming. Who shot you? We've got to find out. So you see, gentlemen, what appeared to be a routine appendectomy turned into something a lot more complicated. But you may profit by what happened to you today. Whenever you operate, keep an open mind. Always be prepared for the unexpected. And make certain that your patient doesn't recover from your surgery only to die of a condition you overlooked. Which of you is Sean Lenahan? Nurse. Advise the officer this is not a public house. Every minute he and his men remain in this operating theater, the patient runs a risk of fatal infection. Captain, you'll have to wait in the corridor. As long as there's no other exit. As I was saying, gentlemen, in surgery, as in many another walk of life, one must always be prepared for the unexpected. <laughs> Just a minute. Remove your mask. Now then, gentlemen, Sean Lenahan. Remove your masks. Summers. All right, sir. This way, sir. The ambulance is waiting. You two, second floor, every room. This floor, work your way back. Thomas, come with me. Sean, it looks as if you'll have to stay here in the dark for a while, along with the rest of the moles. Well, it had to come one day. Now, what about our plan for Colonel Smithson? He's an elusive man, our Colonel, but I think we've got him this time. <clears throat> Ashtown Dock, the tent. He'll be there to see Lord Crandall off to England. Mm -hmm. I'll come out of the dark for that. <laughs> with Smithson out of the way, perhaps we can all walk in the Dublin sunshine again. For good. What makes you say that? There's great news, Sean. Peace feelers from number 10 Downing Street. They're talking treaty. What kind of treaty? Peace. With honor. A republic. A free state. Dominion status. Is that what we've been fighting for? Sean. Both sides must bend a little. We'll be ruling ourselves at last after 700 years. But still tied to England's apron strings. That's not peace, that's surrender. It's a start. The Republic will come later. I warn you. Five out of ten men in the Republican army will spit at peace on those terms. If you sign that treaty, it'll be Irishman against Irishman. Civil war bloodier than this one. And where would you stand, Sean? 
damned well you know. Fought shoulder to shoulder for so long there. Wouldn't like us to end up pointing guns at each other. Then don't settle for anything less than the Republic. Why do you think they come crawling to you with their peace feelers? Not because of the mass meetings or the pamphlets or the poets crying aloud about the black and tan tyranny and Ireland suffering. No, because we've got them on the run. We're beating them at their own game with the rifle and the, and the revolver and the bomb and the, the crackling of the flames. The only thing to do about any war is to end it, with dignity and honor. It'll be a fair treaty. A general amnesty, freedom for all political prisoners, our own parliament. What good is a republic if there's no one left to enjoy it? How much longer can we wade through the blood of our own countrymen? To the last man, we said. You think of that when you pick up your pen. Good morning. Well, how are you feeling today? Any pain? You're asking as a doctor? No pain. Good. Let's have a look at it. I can manage that myself now, thank you. Oh, well, that's a good sign. You sound very cheerful this morning. Did you shoot another British soldier? Hmm, that's coming along fine. I think we'll just leave this on for today, and tomorrow you can do without a bandage. A little fresh air will do it more good than anything. Perhaps you can arrange to have some sent in. <laughs> Perhaps. By the way, was Captain Fleming anything special to you? Not until you killed him. You might like to know that he's alive. He's in a hospital in Bray. Oh, I'm so glad. Fortunately, I'm not the crack shot I thought I was. Why did you say fortunately? This might surprise you, Mrs. Curtis, but... I don't exactly enjoy killing people. You're trying to convince me that you're civilized human beings, after all. Just because a man's a rebel, that doesn't make him a savage. I'm afraid I have good reason to believe otherwise. My husband wasn't quite as lucky as Captain Fleming. Yes, I... I heard about that. I'm, I'm sorry. But how generous of you to extend your sympathy to the enemy. Then it isn't too much to hope that you'll be sorry for me as well. For you? I've no illusions about what would happen to me if Lady Fitzhugh were to die. Tell me, how is it done in the rebel army? Do I face six brave soldiers with rifles? Or do you draw straws and let one man do the job and conserve precious ammunition? You're just being held here as an exchange hostage. If Lady Fitzhugh were to die, you'd be released immediately to your father. Do you expect me to believe that? Why not? Because I've seen your commandant and the look in his eyes. You won't be harmed. You're a soldier. You'll do as he tells you. I have my promise. Why should you promise me anything? Maybe it's because I'm just not a good enough soldier. <laughs> Any news yet? No, not a whisper. What are they waiting for? You seem to be rather anxious to get rid of our prisoner. I don't like to see anybody cooped up like an animal. No, especially a raven-haired beauty like that one, I'm thinking. Oh, don't be an idiot. It's a lunatic way of fighting a war. Up in Dublin, a silver-haired old lady wasting away in a martyr's cell. And here we keep a girl whose only crime is that she's the daughter of an important man. Lunatic. Tell me something, Chris. Yes, what is it? If Lady Fitzhugh dies, what will Linan do? Well, now, 
I wouldn't think about that, Kenny, if I were you. Not until it happened. Is she pretty, Cassidy? Well, now, I'd be a miserable Irish man if I could admit to myself that there was any such creature as a pretty English woman. Well, it's the Irish newspapers that call her the beautiful Mrs. Curtis. Will you, for the love of heaven, not even think of her name? Wouldn't your commandant consider this against orders? There's no specific order against having a breath of fresh air. What if I try to escape? There's just one way. <laughs> I see what you mean. You know, I've had a lot of time to think staring at my four walls this last week. I've wondered about you. You don't seem like the others. Why? For one thing, you're an American. Tell me, why did you come to Ireland? To study at the College of Surgeons. Aren't there plenty of good medical schools in America? Yeah, I guess there are, but it was a wish of my mother's, the school my father went to. And what'll you do when it's over? Go back to America, after I finish my studies. And then I'll become a doctor, I guess. It's hard, isn't it? Standing together at the top of a lighthouse, exchanging life histories. It's as though we were to dance somewhere, and the world was at peace. And you taking me out onto the terrace with a breath of fresh air. And the music was coming from the ballroom. And I was thinking, well, is this young man going to kiss me? And if he does, what shall I do? <laughs> so hopeless and confused. We don't belong here, you and I. You're a doctor. You're not meant to be killing. But we could get away. I know my father would help us. He'd see that you got safely to America, and then I could join you there. Anyway, just as long as we're together. Please, take me away from here, please. Well, not bad, Mrs. Curtis. Not bad at all. For a second, you almost had me fooled. What did you expect me to do? Stand around waiting for your firing squad? Oh, are you quitting so soon? Oh, what does it matter now? What difference does it make? You got a pretty small bag of tricks, don't you? Or maybe I just didn't give you a chance to drag them all out. Tell me, just how far would you have gone? I would have done anything to get away from here. There's just one thing wrong, though. You couldn't have fooled me even for a second if there hadn't been something there to believe. Oh, Kitty. You brought the things all right. That's very kind of Anything you. Anything for the cause, even if it's only a few bits of cloth. Mrs. Curtis, we've had some clothing brought for you. Meaning you expect me to be here for a while? Well, we'll have her looking like a barmaid in Donovan's pub in no time. Nothing here fit for a party at Buckingham Palace. But they'll cover you. And they won't hide the fact you're a woman. They'll be fine, thank you. John. We weren't expecting you tonight. Must be something big brings you down from headquarters, Michael. Big enough. Hey, Commandant. Just. Colonel Smithson. <laughs> well, we leave here early in the morning. There's lots of work to be done before then. I'll make up a bed for you on the second landing, Commandant. Thank you, John. Now, 
We've been blueprinting every move for a week. You'll be able to take your positions without being questioned. Now this is Ashtown Dock. Well, I'll be going. It looks like only my clothes were needed here tonight. Oh, Brett's here. Sailing time? Well, wouldn't you know it? It's the Commandant himself. There'll be fireworks when he sees me, you can bet on that. But I don't understand. You're both on the same side, aren't you? That one's on no woman's side. There are things about that one. Deep things. But I'm not afraid of him. It's going to take split-second timing. I'll be reminding you of that a, a hundred times before the night is over. One mistake. And we'll be leaving our own dead there on the dock. Chris, you had your orders. What is she doing here? Well, she's been a great help to us, Sean. She brought us news of the hostages. And tonight, clothing for the English woman. How long have you been standing there? And how much have you heard? I heard nothing, and I care less. Well, we're going to make sure of that. You'll stay here until we get back. Yes, Your Honor. Whatever you say, Your Honor. All right, now. Once again. I'm on top of the crane over there. I push my dolly from there to the gangplank. Only I, uh, I don't quite make it. And I'm, I'm here to see the gates aren't closed till we get out. And I'm uh, over there on the other side of the gate. I'm waiting here with the motor car running. That's me, a docker, waiting to tie up a bowline. I'm on deck there by the gangplank. I'm checking the cargo as it goes up. Uh -huh. And I'm the dock foreman. Now remember, remember, it's Colonel Smithson himself who gives us the signal. When he says goodbye to Lord Crandall and salutes him, the minute, the instant, his fingers touch the peak of his cap, we give him our salute. Oh, that's the part I love. Him helping us like that. <laughs> All right, now. Once more, and then we'll get some rest. I I'm on no. top of the crane over there. They might like something there. I'm pushing me dolly from here to the gangplank. Only I don't quite make it. I'm, I'm close till we get out. And I'm over there. I'm... It occurred to me you might like some tea. You must have been reading me mind. Oh, uh, I thought you might like some, it being so late in that. Are they still at it? Oh, they are, they are. And if I know himself, they'll be at it for hours yet. Must be important. Cargo here that goes out. There's only one thing they talk about in Ireland, when there's more than one man around a table and a pot of tea between them. And that's the fine soft talk about the taking of life. It means there's a raid coming up, or an ambush, or a burning. More bloodshed, and a few less men to talk and drink tea the next time. Will they all be going? Well, they'll probably leave old Doyle to keep an eye on us. But the rest will be going. And Kerry O'Shea with them. Now, you don't really think that was too clever of me. The way you were both trying so hard not to look at each other, and it all there in your faces for anyone to read. Women are fools, aren't they, Kitty? It was me. I wouldn't waste a heartbeat on a single one of them. Why should I? And my heart broken over and over when the news is brought back about an execution or a body in a ditch or rotting away in some jail. Oh, no. That's not for Kitty Brady.
Are you trying to frighten me out of my wits? Now, where do you think you're going to? To the beach, that's all, for a swim. Oh, for a swim. Or maybe planning to meet Carrie O'Shea, huh? If I was, he'd have to get past you, wouldn't he? Now, I give you my word, I'll be back. Well, now, if... if you were to give me a little more than your word... Why not? <laughs> How long have you been watching me? Just long enough to make sure you're not thinking of leaving us. Is that what you told yourself, Commandant? You were just playing watchdog and nothing else. What else could there be? What else could there be, he says. So pure and noble. Don't you think I've seen you looking at me with your hot eyes? Wanting to put your hands on me? Isn't that the truth now? Wasn't it just Kitty Brady who brought you here and not your precious plans? Why did you never try, Commandant? Were you afraid the others might know would think less of you? Well, they wouldn't know now. We're alone with only the wind and the sea. So what's to stop you, Commandant? Get away from here. And don't come back. And don't ever say a word about us. About the squad. If you do, I'll find you. Kept busting in here and, and wrecked me place. And they bit me up for a liar when I couldn't tell them where you were. Me? What did they want me for? They searched every cottage and farm in Aunt Fala. No, you and the boys at Cassidy's were the only ones gone. So they know now that you have something to do with them. What am I going to do, Donovan? I'm not strong. And I know what they're like when they want to find out something. I might tell them. Kitty, keep a hold of yourself. Now listen, you'll be all right. Now listen, first thing tomorrow, McSweeney comes by to deliver the stout. He's a good man. He'll take you to Dublin with the barrels. Go to Ashtown Dock. Ashtown Dock. Take the Liverpool boat. My sister's over there. He can stay with her for a while. No, no, Donovan. Don't be a fool, child. You'll need the money for your ticket. Boats aren't free. God reward you, Donovan. I'm sure it's little enough to pay the tans back for all this. <laughs>
there'll be killing, won't there? Yes. I have a feeling we'll not see each other again. Does that matter? I'll be back. Sean, is it true what Michael just told me? What did he tell you? That this might be the last ambush. There's talk of a treaty. A treaty? The talk of traitors. Willing to sell Ireland out to the enemy. There'll be no treaty. No treaty until we get what we've been fighting for. We'll keep the flames crackling till we've killed every traitor on Irish soil. But we haven't got all day. He doesn't want it to end. He's always had his eyes fixed on the future, Sean. Maybe he's forgotten how to look right or left. Like many others. to Liverpool. Thank you. Just a moment, miss. What you want? Don't move. wasn't too uncomfortable riding among those barrels? I haven't done anything. Where are the others? What others? Were they finding it a little hot for them in Ardfella? Huh? Perhaps they're all taking a sea trip to find a cooler spot. I don't know what you're talking about. I was only going up. I tell you. I tell you I'm alone. I only came here to go to live. Arrest that man! She's turned us in. What do we do? Smith. Ambush. Get back! Get back in the car!
But it's all over now. Over? Yes, it's the truce, man. Just waiting for the general signature. Tomorrow we're all free. Free to vote for the men of our own choice. Aye, and against them if we wish. Oh, it's you, O'Shea. Well, I'm happy you made it. General, General, tell him about the truce. I'm off to London with a safe conduct. By dawn, the fight will be over. Michael, go down to the lighthouse, fetch Mrs. Curtis, return her to her father. I'll do that, General. This day has been a long time coming. Michael, I'm gonna go with you. If you like that. Michael! It's headquarters, about Lady Fitzhugh. Lady Fitzhugh is dead. Sean, this can't bring Lady Fitzhugh back. We have no choice.
children and a woman. Where? On the hill. You shouldn't have come to see it happen. It isn't going to happen. There's a truce. They've gone to London to negotiate a treaty. If they sign, they'll die like anybody else. And you'll fight a war of your own. Your own private little war. If I have to. Just to keep the bullets flying. You've forgotten what you're fighting for. It isn't Ireland or freedom or any of those fancy words you use to excuse yourself. It's just killing now for the sake of killing. I need men. We'll go to the West and build a new army. Are you with me, Noonan? Ah, uh, Sean. A treaty could mean peace. Lafferty. O'Callaghan. Tom. Tom Cassidy. You're traitors. Traitors, all of you. But I'll take care of you when the time comes. Right now. Ireland owes a debt to Lady Fitzhugh. You wouldn't be thinking of shooting me, would you? Kerry. Don't make me do it. Was I mistaken in you? I thought you were a soldier. I'm not going to fight your war! 